What's up guys? My name is Coach Jimmy from Modern Athlete Strength. We're starting a new series here where we're covering different topics in strength and conditioning. This week's topic is structuring a training week and why that's important. So before designing a program, you just got to answer a few questions. So um, before you start putting pen to paper, you got to ask yourself how many days a week are you or the person you're programming for going to be training. So is it one day a week all the way up to seven days a week? Um, the next thing is goals. What's the person's goals? Is it size or hypertrophy? Is it strength? Is it power? Is it conditioning? Is it getting a team ready for an athletic season? Is it preparing somebody for a marathon or some other event? So those are the things you got to answer before designing the program. Another thing is exercise selection. Exercise selection is really important because um, exercise can be great tools, but certain tools are not for everybody. Uh, what I mean by that is your training age will dictate the tool that you'll pull out for either yourself or somebody that you're programming for. So uh, training age is basically how much experience does that person have with strength training? Um, for example, you're not going to take somebody who's never touched a barbell and throw them right into Olympic lifts. So if somebody's never done an RDL or a front squat, they probably shouldn't be doing a hang clean because those are prerequisites uh, into doing a hang clean. Um, other considerations would be your warm ups, injury prevention modalities, mobility, and flexibility. And there's, there's more that we'll cover, but those are just some of the things to get started. Um, why is it important to have structure uh, to a training week? Um, so basically structure or unstructured is walking into the gym and just going by feel. Um, sometimes on Mondays you do upper body, sometimes it's lower body. Um, you don't feel like doing this exercise. You don't feel like doing uh, cardio today, whatever it is. There's just no structure to your week. You're just kind of showing it up and showing up and winging it. That's really not the way to go. Um, because results are repeatable. So if you're consistent and you have consistency in your week and your training program, the results are repeatable. And if you don't have structure, then you can understand why you're not getting those results. Um, the other thing is don't program hop. So if you're on a program that's 12 weeks and you only do four weeks of it, and you say it's not working, um, that's not, you're not doing any, you're doing a disservice to the program by not following it all the way through. Um, let the program work before switching things up. It also, having structure takes out the thinking. So again, like I mentioned, just showing up to the gym and winging it. If you have a training program and a structure to your training week, you don't, you don't have to think about anything. You just look at the program, you execute the program, and that's it. Um, the other question that I like to bring up is training versus working out. So training is things you need to do versus working out is things you want to do. Not many people like to do single leg Bulgarians or rear foot elevated split squats, but sometimes you need to do that. Um, most people like doing bicep curls and mirror muscles and things they enjoy, to, enjoy doing. There's always a time and place for that, but sometimes that's just working out, going by feel versus actually training and doing things that you need to do versus things you want to do. Okay. So I'm going to cover um, some examples of different training splits or different structures to the training weeks. By all means, this is not the only options out there. I'm just showing you some of the more common ones that are out there. So one is a two-day split, total body push-pull. So day one um, being a total body push day, what I mean by that is lower and upper body pushing movements. So examples are squat and bench press. And again, with all this, I'm not covering sets, reps, anything like that. I'm just showing you the structure. And then on further slides, I'll give examples of actual sets and reps so you can get some more, uh, more examples there. So that's an example of day one, total body push day. Day two, total body pull day, that is lower and upper body pulling movements. So a lower body pull would be a deadlift or an RDL or a trap bar deadlift or any type of pull like that. And then an upper body pull example would be pull-ups, lap pull-downs, rows, things like that. Um, again, this is only a two-day split. So the pros, really time efficient because you're only spending two days in the gym doing strength training. So great if you're short on time. If you have other things outside the gym that are pulling your time, um, whether it's family, whether it's job, whatever it may be. So it's really good if you're 
if you're short on that. Um, it's, it's very good for balancing things outside the weight room if you have other endeavors. So cons may not be great for hypertrophy or putting on size. If you're trying to be a bodybuilder two days a week, probably not enough. Um, so that's why I would steer you away from a two day split and put you into something else uh, that I'll cover as we go through. Um, and then the other con is there's a lot of time between training sessions. So if this is a Monday, Wednesday split or a Monday, Friday split, there is a lot of recovery time, which can be beneficial, but it also could be detrimental if you are having those other goals. Okay. So that's an example of a two day total body split. Next day is a three day split total body push pull, and then a hybrid push pull. So day one, similar to the two day split where it's a total body push day. So you have your upper and lower body pu pushing movements. Examples again, squat and bench press or other variations like that. Day two, total body pull day, same as the two day split. So you have your upper and lower body pulling movements. And then the addition of the third day being total body hybrid, meaning a combination of pushing and pulling movements. So examples of this would be a front squat or other variations of a squat, military press, and then some other pulling um, that you may not have done on either day one or two. Pros, it is a total body training split. Um, so you're covering everything um, within a three day split. It allows you to balance stressors. So you can fill in the gaps with conditioning. If you're into other uh, sports or things like that, like jujitsu or other, other sports, basketball, football, whatever, um, it allows you to do those things maybe on those off days. Um, so that is a benefit or a pro to this, this type of uh, split here. Cons may be too advanced for a novice lifter. Um, for a novice lifter, they may benefit. By all means, you can regress this um, to somebody who doesn't have a lot of training, training age or training experience, but it may just not be the best option for a novice lifter. Okay. Next one is a three-day tier. So the, the tier system was uh, created by a famous strength coach, Joe Ken. Um, and it's basically a three-day total, total body plan that is a total lower and an upper body movement every single day. But depending on the day, um, rotates what the main movement is for the day. So example would be day one is total lower upper. So exercise examples would be hand clean as your total body movement front squat as your lower body movement, and then dumbbell military press as your upper body movement. That's day one. And then as you can see, you're still doing all three on day two, but now the emphasis changes. So on day two, it goes lower upper total. So example, exercise example would be back squat as your first movement, close grip bench as your second, and then kettlebell swings as your third movement. So again, Back squat being your lower, close grip bench being your upper, and then kettlebell swings being a total body movement. Day three, again, the emphasis changes. So now it goes upper, total, lower. So examples of this would be bench press, deadlift, and dumbbell step ups. So bench press being the upper body movement, main upper body movement, deadlift being your lower body, and then, uh, sorry, your total body, and then your dumbbell step ups being your lower body movement. So the pros. For the three-day tier, similar to the three-day total body split on the previous slide. So it is a total body uh, plan, balances the stressors, allows you to train explosively in a fatigue state. Um, and again, this, for, especially for athletes, this style of program is beneficial um, because again, when in sport, you still have to be explosive in that fatigue state. Um, cons, similar to the previous three-day split, may be too advanced for a novice lifter. Four day split, the traditional four day split, a lot of people um, gravitate towards this. This is more of your traditional um, upper, lower, upper, um, and then back to lower. So upper body push day. So unlike the total body, you are just doing upper body movements on this day. So examples of this would be barbell bench press, dumbbell press, triceps, things like that, all pushing movements. Day two, being your lower body push day. So you have your barbell back squat or front squat, dumbbell split squat, um, calf raises, things like that would be on your day two. Day three, 
upper body pull day. So all of your pulling variations. So more of your quote unquote back type day. So you have your pull ups, lap pull downs, rows, biceps, shrugs, things like that. That would cover your second upper body day or day three. And then day four would be your lower body pull day. So your deadlifts, your RDLs, your hamstring work, things like that would be covered on day four. Um, pros, typically people like this, if they like training one body part at a time, um, so it allows for that. And then it is great for muscle growth, hypertrophy, things like that. Cons, a little bit more of a time commitment because now you're committing to four days a week of training. Um, this becomes problematic if you miss a day. So if you miss your day two for two weeks in a row, that means you're, you're not squatting for two weeks. So the next time you squat, it's going to set you back, things like that. That's just one example. Um, but this is a example of a four day split, your traditional four day split. Next one, four day conjugate split that was popularized by um, Louis Simmons. So this is definitely was created more so for power lifters. So you have your day one uh, max effort upper body. So this is your heavy press. So examples of this would be starting the day with a heavy barbell bench press variation, and then you go into upper back, triceps, still upper body focused. Day two would be your max effort lower body. So your heavy squats, um, then followed by your hamstrings and your, your glute work. Um, and that's your day two. And then days three and four basically mirror each other from day one and two, except the main difference is your, it's not a heavy day, it's dynamic effort. So you're lifting sub-maximal weights for maximum velocity. So you're still benching or doing some variation of a bench press, but the load is um, reduced. So now it's lightweight for um, explosive intent and then followed by your upper back and your triceps. Day four, dynamic effort lower body, same thing with dynamic effort upper body where you're taking some sort of barbell back squat or deadlift variation and you're lifting it for maximum speed or maximum velocity, followed by your hamstrings and your glutes. This tends to be great for powerlifting. Um, so if you're, you're looking to get into powerlifting, there's a lot of resources out there that show sample programs and things like that. Um, so this is a good option. Um, this definitely may be too advanced for a novice lifter. Um, they may be, may be more beneficial to stick with a three or four day split that is uh, a little bit simpler because you have to have an understanding of um, just having more exposure to training. So you're lifting heavier loads followed by the lighter loads. So maybe too advanced for somebody new to training. Five day split, your push pull legs, another common one for people, especially new into strength training. Um, it's, it's definitely more body part specific. So day one is your push day, same as that four day split. So all your upper body um, pushing movements. Then day two is your quote unquote back day. So pull ups, lap pull down rows, any back exercise there. Lower body push day, back squat or front squat, split squats, lower body day. Then it is followed by day four, your upper body push day. Um, so if you did day one, you did bench press. This day four typically would be like military press, incline press, things like that. And then back to day five, whatever you didn't cover on day two of your pull day, you would then do on day five. Um, pros of this, good for muscle mass or hypertrophy. Cons would be higher time commitment because now you're committing to five days in the weight room. Um, so you may be leaving some gaps in your training. If conditioning is a heavy focus, it obviously then just adds more time to your to your week for training. Um, and again, same with the four day split. If you miss a training session, it may jam you up um, because you're not hitting those movements uh, for a full week, as opposed to a three day total body split. If you miss a day and you only do two days, you're still doing lower body on those other days. Three day conditioning split. We're going to go in future presentations a little bit further into the weeds on conditioning but this is just an example of how you could structure your week. Day one being your speed training or your hit training, um, your heart rate zones being in that zone four or five. Examples of this would be 100, 100 meter repeats, 400 meter repeats, um, short duration intervals. Day two, more of your threshold work, heart rate zones three and four. Um, this would include like half mile repeats, mile repeats, um, different time intervals there. So that'd be an example of day two. 
And then day three, easy pace, conversational pace, um, either running or things like that. Um, then we heart rate zone two. Examples of this would be 20 plus minutes of continuous work, whether it's running, walking, biking, stair stepper, things like that. Uh, you can even add rower to that as well. Um, the pros of this would be great for time specific improvements. So if you're trying to improve your mile time, your two mile time, things like that, you could follow some sort of structure that is similar to this and have improvements there. Con cons of this, if you do have those higher speed work days, days one and two, and you're new to uh, conditioning and you're not putting in a lot of mileage, um, it's definitely harder on for recovery. So um, you just got to be careful of that because you are a higher risk for overuse injuries. So we'll, again, we're going to cover conditioning in, in further uh, presentations, but this is just a brief synopsis of a three-day conditioning split. Zone two cardio, um, accumulating 150 minutes per week of zone two. Uh, that is the recommendation by the American College of Sports Medicine of just what you should be trying to hit per week for overall uh, health. Uh, examples of this would be three 50-minute sessions or five 30-minute sessions, but just accumulating that 150 minutes of zone two work. Um, examples would be running, walking, biking, stair stepper, things like that. Pros, um, great for overall health, body composition, and recovery. So here's an example of the two-day program that I explained earlier on. So you have your lower body and upper body pushing movements. So as you can see, front squat or back squat, if you're not familiar with an Excel template as far as a program, if you're looking uh, on the slides here, RP7 right next to front squat is your week one, RP8 is week two, week three goes back to seven, and then week four goes back to eight. So front squat or back squat, and then I give an example of things you could pair it with, um, and we'll go further into the weeds on um, how to pair exercises and um, how to know what to pair exercises with and things like that. But that's just an example there. And then you have your upper body pushing movements. So your neutral grip dumbbell incline press paired with a paloff press, your standing one arm military press, things like that would be all your pushing movements on day one. Day two being your barbell or trap bar deadlift. So there's all your pull lower body and upper body pulls. So you have your barbell or trap bar deadlift followed by your weighted pull-ups, side plank plus band row, fat grip row, things like that. And that's an example of a two-day push-pull total body split. Um, sample program for a three-day total body, uh, push day, pull day, hybrid day. So same as the previous two-day for days one and two. So back squat, obviously same as the one, the previous slide, but you have your, your lower body push, your upper body push, back to lower and upper body pushes for your accessory work. Same thing with day two, your, uh, your lower body pull, your upper body pull, and then back to your lower and upper body pulls for your accessory work. And day three, whatever you didn't hit on day one for your push, so front squat or goblet squat, followed by your seated dumbbell military press, so your upper body push, and then back to your upper and lower body and so you have a push there on the dips and then a pull with the rdl so again more of a hybrid type day so that's an example of a three-day total body split four day so this is an example of days one and two so your upper body push day being day one so all of your upper body uh, movements on that day so starting with bench press close grip barbell incline chest flies prone reverse flies things like that for your accessory Day two being your lower body push day. So barbell back squat, RDLs, um, goblet squat, uh, chest supported row would be your lower body push day. And then we have days three and four upper body push. So you have your, your barbell military followed by your seated dumbbell military, triceps, and then some accessory work. Then day four is your lower body pull. Uh, or your lower body day. So you have your deadlift, uh, reverse lunges, um, hamstring work, pull-ups, things like that. Um, again, basically you're just looking at really the, the first movement of example here. So you have your military press and then your deadlift. So military press would be your push, deadlift would be your pull. Here's one that I just threw in there for you guys. Um, 
13 stripes and 50 stars template at Modern Athlete Strength. Um, we, we throw some different circuits and things into our, our programming. And even with our circuits, we still have structure to what we're doing. Um, so one of the workouts that we'll often throw in once in a while for programs is, is this model here. So 13 exercises, 50 reps or time or distance um, for each exercise. So one through 13, you can see all the exercises there. So you have a total body uh, and then I give the categories on the, the right side here. So total body, lower body, upper body, followed by number four being a carry, a core or a cardio piece. And then it's just rinse and repeat for the, for the rest of the workout. So just something I threw in there for you guys just to give uh, a fun little um, patriotic style uh, circuit or work capacity um, and just to give a little bit more uh, structure to what you're doing. So the, all you have to do is basically take what the category is, plug the exercise in. And again, you could design this based on what your total body exercise pool looks like. I just give you a couple examples here, um, but things you can get creative with and uh, start adding in. Okay, so that's an example of the 13 stripes and 50 stars template for either work capacity or um, just a conditioning day um, circuit. What's right for you? Everyone's situation is different. Every weight room is different. Um, every client or team you're working with can be different. Um, so the program, you got to answer all those questions, obviously, but everybody's situation is different. If you have access to a full power five division one weight room, your program is going to look a lot different than somebody who's in a division three weight room, maybe with not as much equipment, not as much space um, versus a person that's training somebody out of a gold's gym or uh, a private sector gym. So that's what I mean by everybody's situation is different. Um, and the person's goals that you're programming for are going to be very different. So um, the other thing is, do you have other hobbies and responsibilities outside the weight room? Because that'll dictate which template or what structure you follow. If you're doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or other sports, um, if you have family life, all those things um, take time. So you've got to take those things in consideration um, when designing a program for yourself or someone else. Um, I like this compliance plus consistency equals results. There's a lot of things out there. A lot of programs work. Um, the best program for you is the one that you're going to be the most compliant and the most consistent with, because that's the one that's going to yield the best results. Um, everything really works. If you buy into it and you're consistent, um, over time and, and just answering all those questions that we covered early on and just figuring out what structure works best for you. Um, the other thing is aesthetic results. Most people get into strength and conditioning or start a training program with certain goals and aesthetic results are a byproduct of good training. So you don't necessarily have to train like a bodybuilder to get aesthetic results. Um, so just things to think about when picking out your structure. Um, at Modern Athlete Strength, we have some downloadable programs um, and then we also have our actual teams. Um, so our downloadable programs, first one is Lumberjack. It's a five to six day a week program, um, lift, and then it's one to two days of conditioning. Full body BJJ is three days lift, three days conditioning. Ruck run carry is a two day lift, two day run, two day ruck program. And then our train heroic teams um, are different um, depending on whatever your goals are. Um, tactical athlete is a three day total body split and three days of conditioning. And then lunch pail, team lunch pail is three days total body split plus three days conditioning. For lunch pail, it's designed for just your uh, everyday person, just balancing things outside the weight room so the workouts are a little shorter. Um, where the tactical athlete um, is a little bit more, um, it's more for your tactical athlete populations, whether it's fire, military, police, things like that. So it's geared towards that population versus lunch pail. Um, again, people that are, are have balance have to balance other things outside the weight room. Um, then Brick House is a bodybuilding style program. It's four to five days of lifting, four to five days of conditioning. And then your last program is your team yoke. This is more so um, 
an add-on to the program that you're already doing. So it's three days of traps, neck, triceps, things like that. And usually the sessions are between 10 and 15 minutes long. So more of an add-on to a program that you're already doing. If you're on one of your the other teams that we offer, this is something you could kind of sprinkle in at the end. Or if you're on a completely different program and you just want to add in extra extra work, this is uh, that's the intent of Team Yoke. All right. So again, the intent today was just to cover structuring a, a training split and a training week. We're going to be covering various topics um, as we do these presentations. And I will say, <clears throat> if you have questions, feel free to reach out um, through social media at Modern Athlete Strength, and uh, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.